The Tale of the Curious Mouse is uh, it's set in olden times in what I like to call history. Um, and uh, it's really the story of the day, the true moment, when um, Roald Dahl, the six-year-old Roald Dahl, met the around about 60-year-old Beatrix Potter. It's a, it's a wonderful story that Abby Wilson has written. And really, it has themes in it of um, realization about the realities of life. It's about not couching things in such a sweet term that children don't come to terms with reality. And I think Beatrix Potter was very keen that um, the characters in her books, you know, get baked into pies, where rats eat kittens, you know, it's not sweet. First of all, I should say that I do know Abby Wilson rather well, and I've known her since she was a sort of baby writer, and now she's a proper grown-up writer. And this script is an example of her beautiful use of language and her really clever, insightful uh, drawing of characters. And although this is Beatrix, uh, I didn't know Beatrix very well, uh, but Abby has introduced us to a Beatrix that suits this story very well. A Beatrix who loves her husband, who's a bit uh, frustrated by things going on in her farm and she's angry about what's happening with conservation where she lives. And a Beatrix who can't be doing with time wasters, um, uh, especially the publishers who are being very demanding. But when I read the script, first of all, um, it's just got the most glorious magic at the centre of it, which is a realisation between an older woman and a young boy about what life, what really matters in life. I suppose when Beatrice was meeting Roald, she didn't know that was Roald Dahl, that he was going to be who he became. Um, she just met another little pesky boy and she had many of these uh, young kids coming into her garden looking for Peter Rabbit and that must have been <laughs> quite an annoyance for her. Well personally I love animation. Um, uh, I think it's a really fantastic art form and to put animation alongside real humans uh, is my favourite mix. So, of course, we're filming at the moment and we're not seeing any of the animation. We're just working around it and knowing roughly when it will happen. But we shot a scene the other day where um, I'm going up to bed and I go past the doll's house and it lit up and the front opened and you think, oh, this is going to be one of those moments here. We're going to see stuff now. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what it's like when it's all put together. I think this is a quintessentially Christmas film. Um, there's something heartwarming about it. There's something of the snow and the wild, and uh, there's something of Beatrix that is, you know, uh, creatures in shawls and, um, you know, all hunkered down together. There's something of that. The warmth of it is wonderful. I certainly uh, read some Beatrix Potter when I was very little and I remember thinking this is a bit scary. These creatures are not quite as they seem. Um, and that, that was good, I remember that uh, as a child. And the same thing applies to Roald. So I'm not at all surprised that he was influenced by her because Roald, you know, not scared to go to the slightly darker side. And kids love that. And it's might, you know, it might be your first experience with something a little bit difficult to handle, you know. Um, bit of violence, bit of death, bit of cheaters and cowards and um, people who aren't quite what they seem. But alongside that, you've got the BFG, you know, just a force for good. So, you know, real good and evil characters are, you know, fantastic, huge, rich scene with both of those writers. <laughs>